Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Dum, 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 My, you sound gay, Claudia. I feel gay, Mama. Oh, I wish I knew how to whistle. Why, all of a sudden? Oh, whistling sounds even gayer than humming. David whistles beautifully. I'm very glad you don't know how. You begrudge me every little talent. I begrudge you every little talent you misuse. Oh. It's not ladylike to whistle when walking down the street with your mother. I don't feel ladylike. I feel gay. Other people manage to feel gay quietly. Not the same thing at all. How do you like my haircut, Mama? Not bad. Is that all? Well, for the two hours you spend in that beauty shop, I expected to see something quite breathtaking. David doesn't like breathtaking haircuts. He likes me to be my own sweet, simple self. I didn't know you were sweet, too. Oh, yes, I get it from you. Was I really at the hairdresser's two hours? Yes, you were indeed. Tell me when you get tired. Oh, I never get tired. Well, I do, so I'll tell you. I feel wonderful. Am I supposed to feel wonderful just before I'm going to have a baby? I was like that. Mama, let's walk by the zoo. I'll show you David's favorite elephant. Tilly? Yes. David has been in love with Tilly since he was seven years old. Do you know that? I'm not surprised. We'd better cross the street while there's a red light. Mama, you do not have to hold my arm. I've crossed streets before. And don't think I haven't worried about them. <laughs> there's the curb. I see it. Really, you think that having a baby is making me blind and dumb. Not blind. Very funny. It's only another half block to the zoo. I haven't been there since the day David and I came together for the first time. It was fall then. Leaves are turning red. A nice full green now. Not as green as Eastbrook. Nothing's as green as the green on our farm. The pride of ownership. <laughs> I'm seeing the world through green-colored glasses. <laughs> I remember when David and I came to the zoo, we'd just moved into our first apartment. You were pretty lucky to find it. Weren't we, though? a block and a half away from you. It seemed like miles. Now we live in Eastbrook. Doesn't seem so far away somehow. Small wonder, seeing as how I've been in Eastbrook almost as long as you have. Now we're back with you. As if the clock mm -hmm. had gone all the way around to noon again. Did you think we'd own a farm when we moved out of your apartment, Mama? No more than you did. David's really happy on the farm. You're a lucky child to be able to see your husband so happy. I know. His zoo, Mama. Oh, I wish David were along. We'll have to give his regards to Tilly. Does she recognize David? Oh, yes. She bellows like crazy when she sees him. Throws her trunk around as if it were light as little valise. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. See, right over there behind those bars. Children love Tilly. I can see why. She's a sweet little elephant. Hello, Tilly, Tilly, Tilly. <laughs> see? She knows me. I think she thinks you're something to eat. Tilly, David sends you his regards. Look how happy she looks when I mention David's name. It seems to be a universal reaction. I think it's true about elephants. What is? But they never forget. Tilly, have you got a message for David? Don't tell me. I know. She's sending him her regards. Oh, you're smart, too. Now, come along. I haven't got all day to spend conversing with a silly elephant. Poor little silly Tilly. Well, Mama's dragging me off. Goodbye. I hope none of those children heard you. I'd be embarrassed. Not at all. Children understand about elephants. Children and wise men. <laughs> now, do you want to take a taxi? I do not. I want to walk down to the pond. Oh, it's just a few yards further along, Mama. And what is at the pond? Children sailing boats. Nurses pushing baby carriages. There used to be something else at the pond. Go on. What reincarnation are we living through now? At the pond that David and I bought the hurdy-gurdy. One is enough. <laughs> There's no reason why we should buy another just for the sake of memories. We couldn't possibly buy another even if we wanted to. Poor old Dominic. He was so sad that day. Snow was snowing and the wind was wind winding. <laughs> there was Dominic playing his hand organ for the last time. He hated to sell it to us, but he needed the money to go back to Italy since his monkey died. But it's nice our having the hand organ, isn't it? 
Oh, marvellous. I don't know what we'd have done without it. I'll sing the baby to sleep with it. That's what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody seems to have taken Dominic's place. It's funny. I'm sure Dominic never had a son. Hurdy gurdies are nice. You rarely hear them around New York anymore. It's a shame. Children were skating on the pond the day David and I were here together. It's June now. There's no ice on the pond. Mama, I can't believe it. Look. Look who it is. No one I've ever seen before. Mama, do you know who it is? It's Dominic. I thought he was in Italy. Well, he should be. He said he really wanted to be. It's the reason we bought his hand organ. And look, he's got another monkey with it. Maybe Josephine had a son. Dominic! Hello, hello! Hello! <laughs> well, well, if she's not the lady with love, is it the good the music? Dominic, what are you doing here? I thought you'd be sitting in the sun in Italy by now. Oh, lady, I just not could go. You give it to me the money so nice, and Dominic, he's a mind is all to make him up. He's going to sail away to Italy, eh? But, but, but what happened? Who is this sweet little monkey? Ah, Hello. that's the juice of the story, lady. Oh, it's so sweet. I'm a walk down a Third Avenue, and I'm a passer by the pet shop. And in the little pet the shop is a little monkey, eh? Hmm? She looks just like a Josephine. She does. <laughs> the same eyes, the same smile, the same sweet look. Dominique, I'm going to say to myself, you got the money, eh? You must have the monkey, too. So, I'm a by the monkey. She's a caller, Josephina the second. I don't blame you, do you, Mama? I've always <laughs> been rather fond of monkeys, thank goodness. And then, when I have the monkey, I'm a say to myself, I'm a say, Dominique, she's almost the spring. The winter, she's go away. The snow, she's a melt. The sky, she's a blue. And the, the trees, they are green. It is just as beautiful in the spring in Manhattan, just like in Italy, no? No, and yes. the bambini, they come back in the park. And then Dominique, he's no here. They would be so sad. So Dominique, he's a come back. And I'm glad, even if we're not here to listen to our music. It's nice to think of the children in the park all around you. Go on, play your music, Dominic. Everybody's waiting. And uh, Mom and I have to get home. Oh, I'm a play. I'm a play all of the time because... He give to me joy in the heart, eh, and he make the heaven just a little bit closer. Please, lady, give my love to your husband. I will. And when you play your hand organ, many, many rich blessings come to you, eh? We are being blessed, Dominic. Goodbye. Goodbye. Arrivederci, signora. Arrivederci. Dio vi bendica, eh? Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Glad he didn't go to Italy. I think we need a few more Dominics around. Now, will you take a taxi? Just a second, Mama. There's another place I'd like to see. Your father was a sentimental man, too. He was? Men don't like to admit it, do they, Mama? Nothing to be ashamed of. You're not. So why should I be? I'm not sentimental. I'm anything but. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> Did anyone ever tell you that behind that crusty exterior of yours beats a sentimental heart? Nobody ever told me, and nobody ever will. All right, Mama, I won't tell you. Never again. Claudia, where are you dragging me now? We're out of the park. We're standing on Fifth Avenue. There are any number of taxis we could take. Well, what's that across the street? A nice, shiny, new yellow and green cab. What's that behind it? Were you and David here, too? One night when David was feeling blue, we... We weren't, weren't married very long. I think we were still living with you. I remember the night. We took a walk. We came down Fifth Avenue, walked up all these steps, stood for a moment in this cathedral. The arch is vaulted high. It's dark. Do you mind, Mama? I'd like to go in. David and I stood, listened that night, too. For that moment, the world seemed simple again. We could look ahead and know whatever happened, we find the courage and the trust to believe in it. What is it about a cathedral, Mama? The finest ones are not built of stone. 
I'd like to repeat that to David. Let's go home now. Here we are, Mama. Are you awfully late? It's a good bit after half past six. Oh, I hope David isn't home. You'll be frantic. Claudia! Claudia, is that you? He's home. And frantic. It's Mama, too, David. Where have you two been? I've been frantic. Hello. I telephoned Dr. Rowland. He hadn't heard from you. I called the hospital. You weren't there. I was I was just about to call the police. David, darling, there's nothing to be excited about. We're fine. I thought certainly the next I'd see of you would be an eight-pound boy. Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Well, I am disappointed. I didn't know what had happened to you. Nothing happened, David. Claudia and I had a lovely afternoon. Well, I'm, I'm glad you had. Didn't you? No. Oh. I certainly don't want to go through a, another half hour like this last one. I'm sorry, darling. How would you like it if, if, if I were about to have a baby and, and I disappeared off into the wild blue yonder nowhere? Well, now that's impossible. Well, you're just lucky it is. It'd serve you right if I did exactly the same thing, exactly the same thing that you did. Oh, darling, listen, please don't be angry. We had such a lovely afternoon. Well, I'm, I'm not angry. I'm just a little upset, that's all. Well, don't be upset either. All right. All right, I, I won't be upset. I'll even forgive you. Oh, good. I'll even forgive you so far as to say I'm... Glad to see you. Well, that's even better. So glad to see you that I'll... I'll even ask you where you've been. Oh, David. I'm so glad you asked. Well? 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 Well, where have you been? My darling. I've been with you. Mm-hmm. 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 La, 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 la. Many jobs are more exhausting in summertime because they generate so much heat. That's why Coke coolers are particularly popular these warm days. What's true in factories and shops is just as true in your home. Take ironing, for instance. It might not seem particularly warm in midwinter, but in midsummer, that's a different story. Remember next time you'd like a delicious cooling-off period that you have a Coca-Cola cooler right in your own kitchen, your refrigerator. Keep it well-stocked with Coke, and you can stop when the spirit moves you to enjoy the pause that refreshes. Are you a zoo fan, Mr. King? Indeed I am, Mrs. Brown. Got a special little giraffe all my own. I enjoyed meeting David's elephant this afternoon and Dominic and the rest of Claudia and David's past. Now, I just wish I knew a little more of their future. You'll know a great deal more about it tomorrow, Mrs. Brown. I will. Yes, indeed, because tomorrow begins the event you've all been waiting for so impatiently. You mean... All I can say is you'd better start packing Claudia's overnight bag and uh, keep that hospital phone number handy. If this is a false alarm, Mr. King, I'll never forgive you. Well, you'll find out tomorrow. Till then, so long, Mrs. Brown. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.